The last video looked at a small ultra portable multiband receiver and found it to be a very nice travel radio. Continuing on the theme, in this video we're going to take a quick look at another popular although slightly larger portable receiver on the market, the Texan PL880. Unlike the last video, I'm not going to compare this radio with others via any relative measurements, but what we will do is look more closely at this radio from a usability perspective. Let's go. First off, I have to say that this is a very nice little radio and that I like it very much. It covers long wave, AM broadcast band, short wave, and FM, and is slightly over a pound in weight. It's the size of a paperback novel, and it runs off a single 3.7 volt rechargeable lithium ion battery. The battery recharges in the radio. Ergonomically, it's very good. The labels are clear and contrast with the dark case nicely. The use of color is intuitive, and there are tuning knobs for both coarse and fine tuning, as well as volume, which I prefer over push buttons. The telescoping antenna has a nice flexible upper section, which is a nice touch. There's a clock and an alarm, and it's easy to toggle views between time and frequency. So just to demonstrate, we have our on off here, and I will turn the volume down. You see it, volume control, tuning knob for coarse, and then for fine tuning, we have that. The antenna here telescopes out quite a ways, and on the top, it's flexible. That's a nice touch because inevitably it's uh, very easy to break these telescoping antennas without trying very hard at all. So looking at the side, we have, a little bit difficult to see, let me zoom in a bit. So on the side we have very clearly marked directionality for volume and fine tuning. We have a bass uh, and treble, uh, just a binary uh, bass or treble tone control. And then over here we have a light switch which enables the auto off for the backlight on the display in probably five or ten seconds um, and a constant on switch as well. On the opposite side we have, turn it around here, we have the power in which is a, a USB uh, driven uh, pin configuration. Very nice, we have a line out for recording. Uh, the usual headphone jacks. We have the, uh, in, uh, the attenuation here for uh, the shortwave antenna. I think this also works on the AM broadcast band, but there's local, normal, and DX sensitivity. And then finally, an external antenna jack, which is a phono jack. Phone jack, um, I'll return to that in a little bit as well. The sound from this radio is impressive. Notice that about 50% of the front is taken up by a speaker. This is a pet peeve of mine when people design nice radios that perform well otherwise but have lousy audio quality because of a small speaker. In fact, I find the audio quality of this receiver to be superior to other portable radios of this size. There's an impressive choice of bandwidth filters which I have found to be quite helpful. On AM broadcast band and shortwave, for example, there are 9, 5, 3.5, and 2.3 kilohertz filters. And on SSB, there are 4, 3, 2.3, 1.2, and 0 0.5 kilohertz selections as well. If you like memories, there are over 3,000 selectable memories to populate. You can tune manually, use an auto browse function, or enter frequencies directly via the keypad. The display is large enough to see, and the background light is easy on the eyes in the dark. To demonstrate the bandwidth selection, let's turn it on, and let's uh, tune it. Well, this is a strong station on the AM band right here. Turn it up a bit. So the AM bandwidth selection is labeled right here, so we're going to touch that. Okay. 
Okay, so there's at 9 kilohertz. 5, 3.5, and then the most narrow, 2.3. And then you go back up. So let's find a weaker station. This is a bit noisier. And again, we'll go through the. Whoops. So there's nine. Five. Three and a half. And 2.3. So you can see it really cuts down on the noise and it does a good job. Let's try to find a single sideband station on shortwave and see how that goes. So I'm uh, going to extend the antenna a bit here. And we're going to go to shortwave. And we're going to go to upper sideband. So this is the 20 meter ham band. And uh, we're just going to tune around and see if we can find a CW signal. Band was open a little while ago, but it seems pretty quiet at, the, at this point. Okay, so there's a very faint station. CW, and of course it fades away. Let's see if we can find something stronger where we can show the filter. Any type of a signal would be helpful. Okay, so there's a RIDI signal, so we're going to Five kilohertz. So you can see how stable this is, and you can really hear the noise limiting functions that are a consequence of the different size filters. One thing I've had to get used to is a signal strength indicator, which is purely numerical. There's no bar plot or graphical depiction of the signal strength. Rather, it's just a number that uh, changes as a function of propagation. The value of this display is measured in dB microvolts, which is presumably measured at the antenna internally. Related to this is the signal to noise ratio. This right here, reading 12 at the moment, which probably isn't terribly useful per se, but nonetheless I find it interesting to watch how the signal to noise ratio increases and decreases with fading, particularly on the AM broadcast band and on shortwave. Also related to the information contained in these displays is the so-called soft mute feature. Soft muting attenuates the audio of signals that fade below a certain threshold. The result is that signals can drop out and come back quite suddenly. This sounds like it might be a good idea, that it might be a little gentler on the ears, but in practice it's just the opposite. It's very frequently annoying and not at all helpful if you're DXing and chasing very weak signals. Several of the ultra-portable radios on the market have this so-called feature and don't allow any user control over it, but the PL880 allows the user to set the mute threshold which is really very nice. I'll link in another review of this radio that describes how to do that and several other quote-unquote hidden features that aren't described in the owner's manual. This radio is really a pleasure to listen to practically because it's not noisy like the Sea Crane Skywave was. The speaker just plain sounds better. I found the sensitivity and selectivity to be very good on the AM broadcast band as well. In fact, it holds its own against my C Crane CC Radio EP, which is a real statement. Furthermore, it couples to a loop antenna quite effectively, 
which isn't always true, particularly on small radios. As an example of the AM sensitivity, let's look at the station that we went after in the last video. That is AM 1010 here, at this location. You'll recall that this corresponds during the daytime to a radio station about an hour from this location that broadcasts at 250 watts. So here's 1010, let's turn up the volume. And you can see now, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see. You can see there's very little uh, signal strength and the signal to noise ratio is essentially zero. If we turn this a bit, although you can't see it or probably hear it, you can actually make out what is being said. Uh, and the signal strength has increased just a very tiny amount to maybe 12 or 13. So let's bring the loop into the picture here. So just to show how it's oriented. Let's zoom back in on the display. So I'm going to tune the loop here. I'm changing the tuning capacitor. So I think you can see that we're on resonance here. The signal strength has increased and the signal to noise ratio has increased modestly. It's now between two and four. And if you just kind of play around with it a bit more, you can probably improve the intelligibility. You see here, now um, increase, decrease the bandwidth. Okay. So again, you can make this out. It may not carry over too well into the microphone on the camera, but again, in person, you can you can dig the voices out of the noise. Now just zoom out a bit here and show what happens. The loop couples pretty effectively into the antenna at 90 degrees as well, which is kind of interesting. On shortwave, the PL880 has proved to be as good as any other portable radio, including the venerable Grundig G5. It performs very well on FM as well. What can I say to ding on this radio? Well, for one, the radio is unusable on AM and shortwave when the battery is recharging. That's not particularly difficult to understand, but still, it's a bit disappointing. I suppose I could also criticize the external antenna jack. It's a phone plug, which is appropriate for a portable radio, but somehow seems a bit less than serious. These issues notwithstanding, this is a very well-designed radio. Based on reviews, I initially purchased a PL660 model radio, but sent it back more or less immediately within hours of receiving it. The sensitivity was poor, and the digital frequency display was significantly off on the wider bandwidth filters. Instead of taking another chance on a PL660, I decided to order the PL880, and I'm very happy I did. It's small enough to travel on trips, but it's engineered well enough to deliver very good performance. Your mileage may vary. I assume, but cannot speak from experience, that the manufacturer has adequate quality assurance in their product. I really like this radio. Time will tell if it lasts, but after two weeks it seems like a winner for travel or use at home. I hope you found this short review interesting. If so, please give it a big thumbs up below. And as always, thanks for watching.